What you're seeing on screen right now is the Steam version of Portal running on an ARM single board computer. I mean, this is really awesome, and this operating system makes it really easy to do so. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. This single board computer can actually run Steam games. Now I will admit, it's not going to run every single Steam game, but it's really impressive to see what we can do with this. And to tell you the truth, now it's pretty simple to do this with the help of a modified RB and operating system from Monkablant known as Afterburner. We'll take a look at that in just a second, but real quick, I did want to go over the board. If you're not familiar with the Rock 5, this is definitely a powerful ARM-based single board computer that's come to market. It's using a Rockchip RK3588. We've seen several devices release with this in 2022 and even 2023 now. But the main claim to fame when it comes to the RK3588 is the GPU. It's using a Mali G610, which in terms of a single board computer, it's a really powerful GPU when you compare it to others that are on the market right now. And that's where all of this really comes in. Now on the Raspberry Pi 4, we were actually able to run PC games using something known as Box86 or even Wine, but we just didn't have that power behind it to kind of push those games to full speed or at least close to full speed. But now with the newly updated Mali drivers known as Panfrost on the Arcade 3588, we're getting some amazing performance with Box86, Box64, and Wine. Now I've actually got two of these boards, both of them do have 16 gigabytes of RAM, but uh, the main one that I've been using is in the official Redaxa case. This is a passively cooled aluminum case, and I'm going to be running my operating system from a 256 gigabyte M.2 SSD. I've already got the one set up in the case ready to go with the operating system we're going to be taking a look at. If you're interested in testing this out, I'll leave a link in the description to the Redaxa forum. You can head right over here and download it. This is Monka Blant's Afterburner Armbian image for the Rock 5, and there's lots of great information over here. Latest download is usually going to be at the very bottom here, but uh, this has so much information you definitely need to read through it. Latest image is uh, right here. It's got Steam pre-installed, Box86, Wine Desktop. It works really well. And through here, they also show you how to set up the performance governor, which is definitely going to up the performance on this RK3588. But yeah, I mean, the way it sits right now, this is one of the best images or operating systems that I've tested with this chipset so far. All right, so jumping right into it, this is based on the latest RMB and Jammy as making this video here. We've got the GNOME desktop. You can customize this if you want to. But one of the best things about this whole operating system being set up is we do have Wine and Box86, plus the Panfrost drivers for this Mali GPU, which really does help out with GPU performance, especially with OpenGL applications. And while we're running a lot of these PC games, which we're going to be taking a look at, we will be using OpenGL. Out of the box, Governor is going to be set to On Demand, but you probably want to set it to Performance really helps out, but you got to keep in mind, this thing's going to get hot. It's going to draw a lot more power. I've seen this thing pull up to 16 watts. Having a cooling fan is definitely recommended to keep those temps down, but I've got the uh, passively cooled case from Radaxa for the Rock 5. The case itself does get really hot. I think I could still thermal throttle this, even though we've got a lot of aluminum here. This operating system is really quick on this board. I'm really surprised at how well it works. Now, uh, in the past, we've taken a look at a couple Ubuntu builds for this board, or at least the RK3588, but this is definitely the quickest, and we've got Steam pre-installed. We're in Steam's small mode right now, which just shows us the games that we can install, kind of alleviates all of the UI to keep the performance up, but you can go full with it if you want to. It's a bit slower on this ARM chip, but it does work. Now, a lot of the stuff that works natively without any kind of configuration are the 2D games that are made for Linux, and especially the Source games, Counter-Strike, Left 4 Dead, Left 4 Dead 2 even runs, and I think that was one of the most impressive things that I saw here. But, you know, other than emulation and gaming on this operating system and this board in general, this is a really snappy system. A lot of people could get by just using this as their everyday desktop PC. Email checking, document editing, you could do some photo editing, video playback, and we do have Kodi pre-installed, so if you wanted to build a little media center, not a problem. And if you don't want to have to touch Terminal, we've got the GNOME Software Center built in, so you can go through here and download all of the apps you need. But I did want to get into some PC gaming on ARM because I thought this was really impressive, and I've used Box86 in the past, I've actually made a few videos on it with the Raspberry Pi 4. Now we've got a much more powerful board here, and we can do a lot more. So the first game I'm starting up is Left 4 Dead 2. 
Remember, this is running on an ARM chip right now. The way I've got this set up right now is 720p low settings. FPS is up in the top left hand corner and with everything going on we're at about 30 FPS, which really isn't bad, but I know it might not sound impressive to some people given the age of this game, but the main thing you gotta keep in mind is this game was never meant to be run on an ARM chip. Right now it's using Box86 to run it on this ARM chip and yeah, I mean, this isn't some ported version for ARM at all, this is the x86 Linux version of Left 4 Dead 2. Next up, we've got Portal. Now this is running at about 80 FPS, more than playable, and it's kind of staying steady here. I think through this whole setup, we could definitely get over 60 FPS. I tried Portal 2, but I kept getting some crashing. So yeah, I mean, you're definitely gonna run into some issues, but it's really awesome to see these x86 games running so well on an ARM chip. The RK3588 isn't a slouch, and it's definitely one of the best ARM chips for a single board computer right now as making this video. But there are more powerful ARM chips on the market. In fact, you probably have one in your pocket, right in your Android or your iPhone right now. So in the future, we'll definitely be able to run AAA games on ARM, but you know, this is a great start for these single board computers. And finally here, Half-Life 2. This is not a port of the game or anything like that. This is the Steam version for x86 running on an ARM chip. We're at about 45 FPS, 720p, low settings, and uh, you know, next generation of these rock chip CPUs will definitely be able to take this over 60 FPS, but I do think that with some tweaking from developers, they could get these games, at least the three that I've shown, to run relatively well on the RK3588. Remember, with this operating system, I didn't have to do any kind of tweaking whatsoever to get these up and running. I just downloaded them through Steam and started them up. So yeah, it's really awesome seeing those x86 games running on an ARM chip, but uh, another thing we have here with this operating system is some really good emulation. PSP, GameCube, Wii, and even PS2 runs really well on this setup. I'm using the standalone version of PPSSPP, we're at 2x resolution, and we'll go with a harder one to emulate, Chains of Olympus. I downloaded the standalone emulator from the GNOME Software Center directly in the operating system, and unfortunately with this build here, I only have access to OpenGL. So 2x resolution is kind of the max with this harder to run game, but if you compiled this from source, you could probably get access to Vulkan and go up a bit higher, but I still think it looks good at 2x, and it's running at 60 FPS. Next up, we've got some GameCube emulation, and I do notice some stutters here, especially with these harder to emulate games. So a little more optimization with the drivers and this emulator could definitely help out, but when it comes to the easier to emulate stuff, Time Splitters, Mario Kart, even Sunshine, you could run those at full speed and have a really good time with it. Automotilista is one of my go-tos, it's definitely a harder one to emulate. Vulcan back in, native resolution, it's not horrible, but yeah, it does dip under 60. And the final thing I wanted to take a look at here was some PS2 emulation using EtherSX2. You do have to head over to the official EtherSX2 website, go to the development section, and download the ARM desktop version. Remember, EtherSX2 is only built for ARM, but it does work with this operating system and a lot of others that you can run on this board. We're going with the Vulcan back in, 2x resolution, and we're going to test out one of my favorite games here. Gran Turismo 4. So at 2x resolution, with the Vulcan back in, looking pretty good here, and even God of War 2 will run on this board, but you need to drop it down to 1x resolution. If you wanted to play some easier to emulate stuff, like Crash Bandicoot and even Kingdom Hearts 2, you could go up to 3x with those. So yeah, this operating system has been absolutely amazing on the Rock 5. I've been having a really good time with it when it comes to emulation and even PC gaming. There's a lot of tweaking you can do in the background to get more games running, but I kind of wanted to show you all you really need to do is download this, flash it to your board, I'm running from an NVMe drive, and you can download games from Steam and start playing them right now on an ARM chip. There's a lot more that can be done with this, but I just kind of wanted to show it off up front, and I will be doing some tweaking with it, I'll definitely keep an eye on it. There's a lot more that I want to try out here, like non-Steam games. I've got a lot of DRM-free stuff from GOG, and I think some of that stuff would probably just work right over here really well, but I need to get it all transferred over and see what we can do. But the way everything's going right now with this chipset, I think we're going to see some awesome stuff in the future. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If you've already got a Rock 5 and you want to try this operating system out, link for it will be in the description. And if you just want to learn more about the Rock 5 itself, I'll leave some links to the official Redaxa website. 
If you have any questions, let me know down below. And like always, thanks for watching.